This is the loneliest animal on earth. His name is Jorge the Lona, and he lives here on the Galapagos Islands. The reason for his nickname is that all others of his species have died. He is the only one left. Jorge is an example of the importance for all living beings of relations with others. Since the beginning of life in the sea, adaptation has taught animals to establish relationships with other beings. Over millions of years, driven by the idea that united we stand, many complex associations have been formed. No one on the planet wants to be forever alone, and all animals surround themselves with more or less complex social structures to increase the chances of survival. The great herds of herbivores start by searching for food together while they defend themselves from predators. But relations become more complex when it is necessary to establish a hierarchy and rules governing communal life. In addition, these bonds are further complicated by sexual reproduction, which implies the need to form couples and take care of the offspring. And this makes it both more possible and more necessary to develop social intelligence. Groups become more complex in order to defend themselves, but also to attack. Many fangs together can bring down larger prey, but that makes it necessary to be organized, to communicate, recognize each other and share the meat. And conflicts need to be resolved as far as possible without killing each other. Our life depends on it. The human mind has created bonds even beyond the real world, seeking to communicate with superior beings who can help us explain the thousands of questions posed by our enormous brains. It is these relationships that have enabled mankind to colonize the entire Earth, turning hominization into humanization and making the biological, cultural and environmental aspects inseparable. But let's start at the beginning. This is an albatross. Since it was born, it has spent seven years flying and fishing out on the ocean. And now it feeds the irresistible urge to return to this island called Hispaniola, on which it came into the world. It needs to find a lifelong mate, a bond which may last for 50 years, so it's important to make the right choice. The males arrive first and wait. When they meet, a complex ritual begins, their way of demonstrating a commitment to sharing their genes till death do us part. Though it looks that way, this is not a combat between rivals, but rather the courtship of animals with inexpressive faces who have to communicate through body gestures. Shortly afterwards, the grooming behavior consolidates the fundamental and simplest bond between living beings, the couple. But some animals have developed reproductive strategies in which stable relationships play no part. Here in Patagonia, Argentina, sex is a rather more violent affair.
This male elephant seal weighs 2,500 kilos. He is capable of copulating with 100 females in a single season, whether they want to or not. He has fought hard to win this beach, and he won't keep it for long. All of the females must have his children, so there's no time for seduction. Very few achieve such a privilege. He is a grade one male, and all the females want big, strong children like him. He will not be able to eat and barely sleeps because other males will constantly try to rape one of his females. And that means he will have to fight. If the warning doesn't work and the invader persists, he will have to show him precisely why he is king of the beach. For the females, a short rest before continuing. This is called polygyny, and for the females, the evident sexual conflict is a guarantee of both the quantity and quality of descendants. A biological pact which benefits both sides. <laughs> 